and then just pumping all of that money back into the drop shipping side of things. Just test, 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 test. 3K, if you pay me 3K per month, I'll drop out of uni and work for you full time. And that whole year blew my perspective out of fucking, out of the water. Try and build the fucking best business with the best product, with the best service, with the best marketing, with the best brand, and you will become the fucking best. Yo, welcome back to the King's Podcast. Today we're sat in the warehouse and we've got Oscar as well, my COO, with us today. Oscar introduce yourself yeah so my name's oscar um i mean i've been working for craig for what fucking a year year and a half yep something like that but we've known each other for like the past 10 11 years right and uh, i was at the beginning when he first started his e-com journey and then i fucked off to uni now i'm here we're in the warehouse and it's fucking cold yeah so it's like 3 a.m when we're recording this right now Legit. and um it's a little bit cold that's why we're dressed up in in <laughs> outfits because we're actually cold yeah so and yeah. it's england obviously so it's freezing cold but this podcast is going to be a little bit different to most so this one it's not really an interview style podcast which is what we normally do this yeah. one's more of a kind of an introduction to me an introduction to oscar as well and just kind of i suppose talking through our journeys the mindset the motivation like what has led us to this position right now where we've earned obviously millions of dollars online and also like what the journey has come like what have we fucking done what have we been doing and how yeah. have we got to this position now i think it's going to be very interesting for you guys to hear about craig's story where he kind of started you know like some of the moves that you made early on were quite you know you were 18 when you uh or 17 when you when you made your first like business move and it's quite impressive right so i think this will, guys will give you a lot of I guess, guidance, advice, whatever the fuck you want to call it, right? But I think it'll be interesting. It's context, right? I think it's important to always add context to... Because if you're a new viewer to the podcast, maybe you haven't seen the main channel, maybe you haven't seen what I've been doing and the case studies and the things that I've done on the main channel, then you have no fucking idea who I am. And it's yeah. it's like, that's why I want to reintroduce myself almost and say like, yo guys, my name's Craig and this kind of thing, right? I want to actually make it clear who I am and I'm not some other just dickhead that started a podcast thinking, yeah, I'm sick and I can interview all these dickheads. And <laughs> yeah. it's like, no, like... Or it's daddy's um, money or yeah, whatever yeah, the fuck. Like, yeah. I, I want to make it clear that I'm not just some random dickhead that started a podcast thinking like, yeah, I'm sick and I fucking love podcast. Yeah. But I've actually been doing things and I want to actually teach you guys cool stuff through using the podcast and get cool guests on the podcast and ask them different questions than everyone asks them. And not make another fucking... We're gonna swear so much in this. I already, I already realised it. And like, <laughs> fuck it, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's just like seven fucks already. Um, and make it clear that with this podcast, I want to go down the right route, and I want to ask actually intelligent questions. I want to bring interesting guests on. I want to do it in the correct way in an interesting manner because. I want to make a podcast that I would want to watch. Yeah. I'm almost doing this for myself. It's kind of selfish because I want to build up the podcast so I can speak to cool people and then by proxy, you guys are going to obviously meet cool people and, and stuff like that. Definitely learn some stuff. Yeah. But yeah, before that, a little bit of an introduction. Obviously, Oscar's very important to my to my organization now as well and mm -hmm. to, to the stores you run and the, the things we do and the businesses we do. <laughs> um, Oscar's nickname is also Little Man as well. So if it's I ever... not my nickname. <laughs> it's not Oscar's my nickname. Little, Oscar's nickname is Little Man. <sighs> Um, so, Greg's yeah. is bold, baby. Oh, uh, Oscar claims he's five eleven in in the DMs. I've seen it multiple times. I'm um, six two, but he's about actually five eight. So chill out, <laughs> chill out. <laughs> so I think it's important. How do we first meet Oscar? We first met at school, right? So it just so happens that we ended up being in the same form in year seven. Um, and yeah, I mean, first. Year seven to year eight, we weren't that close. For Americans, that's when you're like 12, when you first start high school. Yeah, 11, 12 is when you first start, and then 12, 13 is the next year, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and yeah, we weren't that close. I mean, we had like, I was in one friendship group, you in another, and the friendship groups were close, but you and me on an individual level weren't. But as high school went on, we got closer and closer and closer. We started hanging out more and more and more. Hey, our school was kind of a loser, so I'm going to be seeing with him. And like... Oh, is it? <laughs> I was the popular one, and he was a bit weird, <laughs> didn't you it? <laughs> <laughs> I brought these guys in. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Um, but we all gamed together. That was the biggest thing, right? We all played video yeah, games together. Yeah, we all played together. video games together. So that was like the, the kind of way we became stayed friends in I touch. suppose yeah, yeah stayed in touch and then it was kind of it's like you realize almost you only have like a couple friends in high school and like in high school you think you have like 20 friends or you kind of have like 20 friends 20 people 20 you speak friends. to every single day whereas then after you leave secondary school you realize like okay like none of these guys were really my friends and then there's only a few people that you really fuck with on a deep level yeah and like once yeah. you stop seeing someone on a daily basis it's then like okay who do i choose to hang out with rather than being just put in a position where you kind of have to be around just people, people. that you 
might not Meth. have the most in common with yeah. yeah yeah but yeah we kind of stayed in touch after high school because we carried on gaming right we had a lot in common with two of our other friends as well and i mean i went to college so i had no intention on going to university originally i ended up going to college because like fuck a levels i don't need to do them and i was going to join the army and college, then- college is when you're like 17 18 mm-hmm. after high school you can either go to a level. Like, you can either do more high school, yeah, or you can go do like this little kind of shitty thing for. They retards, try and basically. say it's equivalent, but it's, it's not. just not. You go in three days a week, and it's all coursework based, right? Um, and you went to college as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So I went to college doing boring shit, mechanical engineering. Craig went off to do I don't know business studies or yeah, yeah, something yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, college was two years long. So after that, I then took a gap year, still planning on joining the army. Craig. Well, actually, talk talk us through that point because I think at that point you had left college and gone into an so, apprenticeship. So I went to college for one year. It was a two year course, so I dropped out of college basically. Yeah. Um, so I didn't get any qualification from that. And when I was in college, this was when I was like sixteen, seventeen. I basically I realized that I wasn't learning anything. And the biggest thing for me, the reason why I kind of do business is to actually learn. Yeah. And some people do it for money. Some people do it for freedom. Things like this. The reason why I really do it is to actually just continually learn. Otherwise, I just get so fucking bored. I like challenges. Whereas if you're not doing something as well you don't like, you just won't put any effort into it. Like no, your obviously. GCSEs, what? Like you got an A star or some shit in business, and then you got a, like man. two other GCSEs. Like yeah, that was I'm it. I got an A because my mum. Yeah, Go my mum forced me to actually get some grades and other things <laughs> rather than just business. But yeah. I, if you're American, I almost dropped, I almost flunked high school. Yeah, yeah. I almost failed it because I almost didn't get like five GCSEs, but then I have like five GCSEs now. But whatever. I went to, it was like a two year course. I dropped out after one year. Uh, when I dropped out, I got an apprenticeship where, where it's like you're technically learning because in the UK you have to stay in education till you're 18. Yeah. And then when I dropped out, I did that apprenticeship, which is the best thing in the entire fucking universe. Um, where I was learning, it was a small company, most honestly wonderful fucking company wonderful people and um i was still learning and i was actually earning a bit of money it was like a thousand pound a month one 1200 pound a month something like this and that enabled me to basically learn a bunch of cool shit because i was building computers which i like doing i was like kind of selling them not really selling selling but i was kind of selling them as well and you're doing a lot of marketing weren't you yeah so it transitioned to a marketing role which then originally like got me into like wait fuck i can kind of really like this i want to do this more yeah. because it was a small company so it's like mo- one person does multiple different kind of roles you play different hats because it's a small company it's like maybe six people when i joined oh shit um yeah maybe six yeah six people and then two new apprentice apprentices joined we should get a little apprentice that'd be hilarious that'd be good little interns mate bro that'd be <laughs> sick that'd actually be so good because yeah. you can fire them like instantly so yeah, you don't pay the interns either well interns interns are like people pay them. yeah yeah but anyways anyways so i did that and after about 10 months or literally was 10 months i i quit the apprenticeship and i went quick this is what i would say is his first like big business play because i you might not think it's that cool but you were 18 and you did this big thing and i was like oh that's i didn't even i wouldn't even think to do something like that no one not a normal person would think to do something like that but explain what you did so people understand yeah, but it was more kind of luck than anything. Or not luck, but it was more... I don't know. It seems cool from the outside. Anyways, what I did was I spoke to my boss. I remember I was terrified to speak to my boss because he's quite... Not scary, <laughs> but he was like... Erratic. He was a boss. No, no, no. Not that boss. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, Different boss. Okay. Like there was multiple... He wasn't a boss. He was like an owner, whatever. But um, it was the one boss... That, he actually popped up to me recently, but um, he he was a super cool guy and he was kind of like not I don't know I was just a pussy back in the day basically I was a pussy yeah. and I remember I was really scared to speak to him and I spoke to him I remember it was in the corridor of the route like there was two floors and it was the corridor going up and um, I basically said like I, I want to leave I want to go do more marketing or I want to start my own marketing company is what I said because I'm really enjoying making YouTube videos for you posting on LinkedIn I really enjoy that part but the rest of it is it's not really for me I, I, I was fucking brain dead I was like falling asleep at the desk like it was so boring Yeah, and I noticed that every single day I was coming into work later and later and I wasn't waking up for my alarms whereas originally in the job just so excited because I, I love learning stuff yeah. so I wanted to go in whereas then it kind of felt like school because I was just not wanting to go into school I was like dreading it on Sunday rather than being excited for it I think you should always be excited for, for whatever you're doing with the majority of your life Yeah. so I basically quit and 
I went and started the marketing agency. So the marketing agency, my first client and pretty much my only client for the majority of the time was actually that company. Yeah. So he then basically hired me as an outside consultant to do continue doing the same role that I was already doing in the company because I was okay at it, yeah. I suppose. And now you're getting paid more to do the same thing so as I was, well. I was basically, I was getting paid kind of the same, mm. but I was had like all my free time. So I was maybe working with, like I was working 40 hours, a thousand pound a month. And then I was working like 15 hours, 10 hours for a thousand pound a month. Yeah. So it was, it was sick. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. Um, and then that allowed me to Start learn more, building, learn building, building more building. things and yeah. understand so many more things. And it allowed me to obviously move forward and, and do cooler stuff as well. Yeah. But I want to I kind of move on and skip a few steps and stuff like this. But the first time I then kind of, when you're on your gap year, when we kind of came back together was when you were editing those videos. Because yeah. w- my role was in the company, in the marketing agency, we were doing like YouTube videos for other people. And I was like a host. You can actually find the videos. Maybe we'll pop it up on screen. Hello everyone, it's Craig from Server Factory back again with another video. This week, we have a video packed with info. We'll be taking a look at PCIe 4.0 technology. Pretty much every computer system needs RAM or randomly accessible memory. If you've enjoyed this video and feel like you've learned something, please give us a like and leave a comment down below on what content you want to see from us in the future. Oh but, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll pop it up on screen probably. Yeah, yeah we will. Yeah. And yeah. I had long hair down to here. And essentially what I was doing is I was doing drop shipping on the side as well yeah. uh, with a partner. So I was working with him and I was, I, was, I was doing customer service for him and I was just working for free, just basically being a slave. Not in a negative way, in a fucking good way. As in you should be a fucking slave in the beginning. And slavery is good. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's clipped. No, no. <laughs> That's and it, you're banned. <laughs> what I was doing is I was like, fuck doing this editing bullshit because it takes so long and it's not really that yeah. complicated. So I'll just give that to someone else and then I just hired you essentially. Yeah, so COVID happened around February. So up until that point, I was working two jobs on my gap year. And um, one of them was the army. The other one was just a pub. COVID hit, so I got furlough pay from both of them. And then Craig hit me up basically saying, I don't know if I hit you up or you hit me up, but we were always talking anyway. And then we just kind of got into the discussion of me coming to work for him. So I did, you know. So throughout COVID from February all the way till September, which is when I went off to uni, we were literally, while everyone else was stuck inside and like hating COVID and whatnot, every single day we would be going into the office because he had a little office on a farm, yeah, little chicken farm. We'd go in there every single day and I would essentially just be doing the marketing stuff for this other company, editing. He would be just doing dropshipping and essentially just learning new stuff. I mean, I did a few bits of dropshipping. I made a few Shopify stores. Made quite a few stores. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> it was the grunt stores. work. I did customer service quite a lot. I yeah, did lots did, of grunt work. You did the work. customer service and yeah. you also did like making the stores. So back then, back right at the beginning of COVID, this was like first lockdown COVID as well. Mm. I don't know when that was, 2019? I don't know when 2021? that was. 2021? No, 20. No, it wasn't. 20. Was Whatever. I don't, yeah, knows. probably 2020 because February. Yeah. Um, we'd already had like one winner at that point, like one big winner. And then it was just like, okay, let's fucking test every single day. So the, the goal was basically five days a week to make a whole new one product store every single every single day of the week and test it every single day of the week. Yeah. So that was like very intensive on time, very intensive on money. So obviously you helped me with that and and Yeah, that yeah. first store that you had, that was almost became your play money for you guys to just start testing and throwing shit well, out that's what it was and, so yeah. so <laughs> i mean we did that, a bunch of that random was a very shit. good example of like reinvest fucking everything um yeah. and that that first store did about three i want to say three fifty thousand dollars three hundred fifty thousand dollars in revenue the profit margins weren't that great oh, bro, like we're on, i'm wearing like four layers right now um <laughs> we did, that's that first store the first drop shipping store it wasn't a very good product in terms of actual quality, but it was actually a fucking amazing product to market. Yeah. Sick product to market. Yeah. And um, that store, the 350K roughly revenue, I think I think it was dollars, I think it was pounds. I don't know. I, I don't Fuck know where the Shopify is. Fuck yeah. us. We had like 25 Shopify logins. And with all of the profit from that, which really wasn't that much profit because <laughs> we were running like 10% margins, made a bunch of mistakes. Um, 
because we were selling like fifty dollars, but it was like the delivered cost of goods was like twenty five dollars. Ridiculously bad if you if you know drop shipping, like the Shopify side of things. You want to be selling three, four times markup minimum, and we just weren't doing that because we found this one winner. And we were just trying to take all the blood out of the stone, and it was terrible. Yeah, but um, it was really good. <laughs> but every single penny blew that on just test 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 invested every single fucking penny like back into the business the office the only expense i had was an office that was 200 pound a month which we were still doing the video stuff at this time so that was easily paying for that yeah you couldn't travel anywhere because it was covid yeah couldn't go anywhere and we were having like toast and sardines and i was just i was living at home and i was literally toasting your house was like five minutes away so we just go to your house eat lunch go back and then we were also doing supreme reselling on the side and Yeezy yeah. selling on yeah. the side and yeah. then just pumping all of that money back into the drop shipping side of things. Yep. Just test, 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 test. And it paid off. Yeah, it, literally. That's only like just reinvesting so heavily. Yeah. So heavily. And then every single penny. Begin, uh, kind of middle of that summer, that's when you guys started to create your, well, middle to end of summer. That's when you guys started to create this brand. Yeah. Your first brand, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think the time. Yeah, I'm bad with timelines. Um, well, but, it was um, because I remember I was there at the very beginning. Then we moved to the new offices. I was still there for a little bit, and then I fucked off to uni. It was and when then, we moved to the new office. Yeah, we were continuing to run that one drop shipping store, and it was still kind of tailing off. Yeah, and uh, we we're testing new products. We had a couple winners, minimum baby winners. Yeah, just trash winners taking blood out of a stone again. Um, and but then you were kind of putting all of your time into then, building then, yeah. this. So yeah. then we were building um, the My Licorice, which is, which is kind of what's behind us. We've got like the PR products and stuff, like the random kind of stock behind us and stuff like this. And then yeah. obviously we've got a bunch more stuff in front of us here. Um, and we were doing that side of things and that was, that was obviously fun and interesting. Yeah. But yeah, you weren't really there for that much of it, were you? No, I was there for like, the first, I think, month. And then I fucked off to uni. And I remember, because this entire time, right, Craig, I was Craig's first employee technically so he had never dealt with employees this guy, before this guy brings out the story every single fucking chance yeah he gets of course every man every single course. chance so craig always thought i was shit right like he would always be telling me i'm shit i'd make little mistakes and i was incompetent blah 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 soon as i leave <laughs> literally two weeks after i leave he gets a message saying is there any way you can come back from uni are you able to how like he starts trying to get me back and he's just chatting shit about all of his now new employees that he had to hire to replace me um, but well, they weren't really they weren't to replay they were for other roles they were for other roles yeah so but I but, just did a bunch of random shit yeah so it was like all these other people just were just and it really showed you how actually employees are right yeah it yeah. showed me a lot more about how employees are and how common sense isn't common and yeah yeah like those are really the main things like yeah. common sense that ain't fucking common but then it kind of goes to me being at uni right I did a few jobs for you over uni just for a quick extra bit of editing. money yeah i was still doing edi- editing for a while um just for extra cash right but i mean i was en- essentially out for the next two yeah two years i was then at uni be- before i ended up dropping out so i mean talk talk to us about growing the brand growing this in the offices you have any funny well i mean there's a lot of funny stories i don't know if we can show or talk yeah, about of course it. i don't give a fuck yeah um yeah like what's gonna happen like what, they're gonna come tell us off like <laughs> I don't know if gonna happen to me nah nah I've told the stories before mm. I think um, whatever yeah so yeah the office was fun so we got an office in Hempstead so that's outside of North London yeah and um, wait. so anyways we got an office in North London basically um, outside in, in, a, in a little town called Hemel Hempstead so we upgraded from the chicken office which was £200 a month no hot water yep. no toilet yep. um, electricity cut like twice I think yeah it was amazing though I actually loved that office he would always say I'd always complain and he would always say no it's got character mate it's got character and it was quite cool because it was an apple farm as well you could just chuck apples at chickens all day and just fucking it was annoying though it was bad for filming videos because there was always chickens in the fucking background chicken noise yeah so we we filmed a few videos like um, tutorials back in the day about like Shopify stuff and uh, you could always hear like chickens in the background yeah like when you'd be on a pitch meeting you'd always hear like the cockerel like 
Do, yeah. do, 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 like that yeah. kind of noise um, uh, which is a hilarious, had character yeah. but you'd have, to, you'd have to piss in the bushes you'd yeah. have to shit at home yeah. Yeah. like um, there was no hot water and I, I remember that vividly because at the beginning of COVID, like lockdown like no one knew what was going on so like you have to wash your hands like bro yeah you have to wash your hands bro. and it's freezing cold it's like February UK so the water's like basically frozen as is bro so I remember the first fucking day you made me come in and said no 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 you have to wash your hands yeah, for 20 yeah, seconds yeah yeah it was Fucking you got freezing, dirty hands, bro. bro. <laughs> dirty hands. Do you remember the Mexico vlog? <laughs> hey, chill out, man. Chill out. Can't believe you put that in there. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Yeah. We were talking about the, the new office. So we got yeah. a new office in Emma Hempstead. We got an office that was actually quite small. Um, and I think off the top of my head, it's like £500 a month. We have a picture of that one. So yeah, put yeah, that picture up that on one. the screen. Yeah. Yeah, I should take more pictures. As one note as well, if, any, if, if you guys, which I assume you are, like in the beginning of your business journey or maybe a little bit further and whatever, just take pictures. Just take pictures, take videos. Mm. Like just please because that's Document one thing it. that I do regret it's like we, we do have videos of the chicken office we do yeah. but not enough no. um, not enough of those first offices I mean we have some but it's like it's just not enough we, no we do we do but then it's like confidential products everywhere like products yeah. that we still run to this day are products that like there'll be issues if we put them places so it's yeah. like well anyways that office was really good and um, that office was sick that was the first time it felt like a real business because yeah. the chicken office was a portable cabin office so at the it end was, of a farm it was kind of rotting it was kind of there was no hot water stuff like this and then we moved to a big shared office building so we had like one little office and there was a bunch of other ones in there yeah and that place was that place was great um, that place was really good even though they fucked us on the deposit but anyways whatever and um, did they was, though or did you just break a bunch of shit we pro- no we didn't break that much stuff we did have our fun with the office yeah I'm not yeah. gonna lie but yeah. and we did kind of dominate it you, oh, you did big time no, we dominated it yeah, the like, first one that you got hated us in there. then was like not big enough I remember the first fucking day so we we're young boys. Yeah. We we're like nineteen twenty. We'd always like play fight and just fuck around and shit like this. Yeah. First fucking day, we told our neighbours in the office because it's thin walls. Like, oh, if you if you if we're too loud or anything, just and it was a suspended ceiling. Yeah. So the tra- sound travelled completely over it. So we're like, oh, if we're ever too loud, just just come, let us know. Um, blah blah blah. Just knock on our door, just let us know. So we're very sorry if we're too loud, but just please come, let us know. Fucking our neighbour snitched on us literally that like, third day in. <laughs> like I, we were, I remember we were like play fine and we like get pushed against the wall and we're yeah. like, fuck, they're gonna fucking come round. Yeah. And then they just went straight to reception, and snitched on us. But anyways, yeah, we had a bunch of fun in that office and we we got yeah. we went from an office. Some, like tiny office like a two person office like small office small. we went to like a, a four person office and then we went to a four person office and a two person office that were next door to yeah, each other yeah we were other. next to each other not to each other and then we went from a four and a two to a four and a two and like it was another six. four or six was nah, it that was quite big yeah like maybe like five yeah so then Which we had like opposite. all of these offices <laughs> and it was all of these there were these three offices and then the kitchen and then and that's all kitchen. it was communal kitchen communal and that's kitchen, all it was communal communal on the corridor. corridor yeah so these guys ended up just dominating this entire area which is right by the kitchen that everyone uses in this office complex and they would be so fucking loud shit would be everywhere it was all over the place one girl broke her arm at some point yeah like, it was a bunch of shit um that was she her own fault to broke, be fair she didn't break her arm she broke her wrist okay okay but that was her own fault i don't fault. think she actually broke I, mean, it. I think she like she stood on a rotating chair Bro, trying was to get something from the top it's completely awful completely anyway awful. anyways yeah we had strippers in the office that was a fun little story you um, should have still have the clip for that put it on if you oh, do I can't put the yeah. clip on that <laughs> fucking hell I can't do that that was fucked like she like squatted and sat down on one of our employees faces <laughs> fucked I we had a bunch of that. fun but we did, it was good in the beginning but then we didn't really do that much work towards the end because it was yeah the, the, the one mistake we made we had maybe like 10 employees at the peak 10 like no no we had maybe like eight full-time employees in there five days a week you had weekend workers as well i mean weekend workers as well but i'm not including those like okay. full day yeah we had like we had a lot of employees plus eight you, employees is a lot of employees plus you two or you three no i'm can't, whatever it's like eight people Fair eight amount. to ten people right yeah. whatever decent amount of people but all of these people were our friends or friends of friends yeah so it was just this community of just like fuckery just 24 7 yeah which is a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. And it <laughs> was a lot of fun, but mm. was it the best opportunity to make money? No. Mm, no. So 
yeah we obviously moved on and then I moved up here and then we got a warehouse that was like whatever and we got warehouse and stuff like this yeah, but yeah it was a lot of fun in that office um yeah missed, and you moved up out. here because it was a fuck ton cheaper like you fuck were paying the same you're paying less for what was it you're paying less than what you paid per month for like we were paying half for double the size there you something go. like this yeah and even that was like a small warehouse and it was expensive yeah so we got obviously yeah whatever but the, the offices were a lot of fun and then you moved up here as well obviously to take care of the warehouse and yeah. i was up here as well for uni and, yeah, so um, the reason, so what happened was I was in North London, Oscar was in Nottingham for, for university, um, yeah. uni uh, Nottingham Trent, if anyone. Uni like of Nottingham, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> only, <laughs> only a few people will understand yeah, that. Yeah, not joking in the land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I don't know, someone laughed at it. Yeah. Hopefully. Key I laughed. <laughs> yeah, 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 literally. <laughs> One guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I should explain. No, 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 no. Trent's the shit uni. There's two unis in Nottingham. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So I moved up to Nottingham and I chose Nottingham to because I was obviously moving an entire essentially warehouse. I had to get new staff members because all these staff members were 18 to 20 year olds. They're not going to move two and a half hours away for a job that pays minimum wage. They're no. just not. And they're all idiots basically anyways. Yeah. No offense, but yeah. Yeah. I think it's just fair. I not think idiots, but... It was a stupid role and it was yeah. bad management and it was my fault. But anyways, learn the lesson. So we moved up to Nottingham essentially. And um, the reason why I chose that is because I've got family in the area and then Oscar was also here. So it's useful to have a friend in the local area. So it was like, and it was cheap as fuck as well. Yeah, you stayed at my house over summer because my roommates hadn't moved in yet. So we lived again together over summer for a good six weeks. Yeah, I had spare warehouse keys. Like I wasn't in the business anymore, but I was, you know, I'd occasionally pop in to do shit or um, I, I think I packaged a little bit as well as like a bit of extra money, but yeah. Yeah, but at this point, Oscar's not in the business at all. Like no. he's not getting a page, where you get like occasional little things. But yeah, but I was mainly just helping not a paycheck. out. Yeah. And obviously we stopped the editing stuff by now because everything else is so busy. And this is like years later from that. This is literally like two years and we've yeah. done in like two minutes. But um, you got the warehouse, Got a bunch of new employees. Obviously, had a million in problems with the employees as, again. Oh my god, fucking hell! Because spot proper. That's one thing. Like, the, the, just like common sense ain't common. Common kind of sense ain't common. And, and good staff members are actually genuinely very difficult to find. Yeah. Like. Yeah. 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 Like one guy threatened you. I think you've told that story before. No. On an old yeah. Podcast. So one guy basically, he, he gave me his two weeks notice. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, mate. He was like, oh. I because I basically put him on a different role mm. and he was packaging let's say he was packaging bananas and he wanted to package sweets and I was like yeah, you're packaging fucking bananas mate sweets is slow right now like do you want me to fire you or like you're fucking packaging bananas so he was packaging bananas and he didn't really like packaging bananas yeah fucking up packaging one thing's packaging whatever Pack yeah it's the same packaging shit packaging one thing's packaging another thing yeah so he didn't want to do that so he ended up quitting uh, gave me two weeks notice then about three days into his two weeks notice he just walked out he's like I've had enough of it mate walked out and I was like okay bro it was just lunchtime other people in the <laughs> warehouse I was like alright mate like no worries bro like I'll still pay you the end of the month just like normal no stress because I just couldn't be asked. and to be honest I didn't really need him that much yeah. it was fine so he walked out and then he ended up sending me a bunch of messages like oh my well, I'm going to come to the world sort you out yeah he was like oh you better pay me now I was like bro I'm going to pay you the end of the month you've been working for me for like 3-4 months like I'm going to pay you the end of the month just like normal because I have to do the taxes payroll is end of the month like that's when my accountant does it he's like oh I don't think you're going to pay me I was like I am and he was like oh I'm going to come down to the warehouse and sort you out I was like okay like you know where the warehouse is I literally said like okay like come like, like <laughs> what are you gonna do on, bro. never yeah. turned up obviously just paid him at the end of the month like normal haven't um, heard from him since yeah yeah special guy but anyways you find a lot of special people and that's one thing I think um, you can take away from it a lot of special people yeah and um, yeah whatever yeah I, I don't know I feel like we've just rambled about stories well it's kind of like bringing them up to date right so it's, then, yeah, it's interesting right so basically I've done a bunch of different things and then this is like a five year journey in like fucking ten minutes we've covered yeah um, so now we're at summer 2022 the end of summer 2022 right and you're thinking about or in the process of moving to Dubai so you're now leaving Nottingham Nottingham you're going to Dubai right the warehouse is kind of running itself to some degree 
you can run it from afar so this is at the point that you're thinking of moving yeah so he built up the employees built up the like a manager in the warehouse and stuff like this so the warehouse was gucci yeah so i was like fuck this i'm leaving going to dubai but in that summer me and craig did a road trip in the summer um we drove down through europe all the way down to uh, monte Pontiano in italy and then we went back up for like monaco and shit good road trip on that road trip side note if anyone's out there and wants like a sick holiday idea buy a cheap mx5 mazda mx5 a mark ii is very good yeah try and get one with lo- like low mileage uh low owners easy as best very very good trip that trip that was the sick. cars like cheap as fuck yeah we we're actually planning a big one in summer yeah um we're like we're buying we're buying a bunch of cars and stuff like this for yeah. it uh, which you, which it's gonna be sick. first time i said it it's, it's gonna be fucking amazing but um we maybe spent like two gra- like what grand and a half each on that holiday <coughs> a little bit over a grand and a half each yeah yeah it's like one but seven each and the cost of the car insurance blah 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 whatever but it's like 10 days amazing yeah but basically on this trip i was kind of just like seeing craig work for like three four hours a day it kind of got me thinking a little bit um and yeah basically the thing that i wanted to do my entire life which was join the army i then kind of just decided i don't want to do that anymore so then i was starting my third year of a four-year degree so i was basically halfway through uni and i was just kind of like well i'm now at uni getting a degree for something i don't particularly want to do anymore because join the to join the army in your specific role you need a a degree correct that's the whole reason i went to uni in the first place and um yeah at the same time craig was moving to dubai and craig i remember you came to my apartment my place my flat and uh we basically talked about it for a little bit because i was obviously telling him my kind of thought process as well at the time and he literally said to me well how much would i have to pay you per month to drop out of uni and come work with me again and i was like oh fuck so i thought about it i thought he was joking for a bit but he was like no i'm deadly serious so i thought about it that was in september thought about it for a while Remember that, you said like a drastically low figure that I kind of like laughed at. I know. I remember the figures, um, but I'll, t- <laughs> I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll get to that in a sec. But at the same time, you were starting Etsy Kings, your online programming community, right? So he made the course, he made the program and he gave me the drafts as well, kind of back and forth a little bit, right? And, you know, because I knew fuck all about Ecom. Finally, he got his final revision, whatever. And I started to look into Etsy. I don't actually know if you know this, but I was looking into Etsy as well and I tried to make a store. Um, or I started to make a store. By November, I came back to him. He had come back from Dubai. He was now out there living there, right? He came back to the UK and I was like, I've got the number. So you walk into my kitchen, I'm just like, 3K. 3K, if you pay me 3K per month, I'll drop out of uni and work for you full time. And you literally said, is that it? (laughs) And I was like, this cunt, like, I don't want to ask for too much. I don't want to ask for too little. And he just comes and goes, is that it? And I just go, all right, five. I want you pay me 5K, I'll drop out of uni. And he was like, all right, come, deal. And we shook on it and then boom. So from November, I had decided, okay, I'm not doing exams, fuck uni. Started coming to the warehouse a little bit. You slowly started to integrate me in. I was still doing some lectures. I had one exam that I had to do, but I ended up dropping out of uni on December 16th, 2022. I then Craig flew me to Dubai. Uh, We spent New Year's in Dubai that year. And on the 1st of January, 2023, my role officially started. So we were together at the time. You kind of integrated me in. And what that was a year and however many months ago. And so I've been working for you since. Yeah. Yeah. It's been shit ever since. Is it, mate? (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, and that whole year blew my perspective out of fucking, you know, out of the water. Because I had been at uni broke for the past two fucking years. And we went, I, I ended up going to, I've got a list of all the countries we visited. Not in order. But I ended up going to Dubai, obviously, beginning of the year. Then we went, I went to Dubai again. Now it was kind of early March. I went, we went to Thailand for three weeks. You were there three weeks. I was there three weeks. Oh yeah, that fucking um, dump. We went straight from Thailand to Warsaw, Poland. Then I went to Malaga, Spain. That was actually a bit of a holiday for me. A weekend <laughs> thing. Addicted to the lifestyle. Addicted to the lifestyle. Um, then I went, then we had our first EK event in Spain, Barcelona. Then I went to Dubai twice more. We ended up going to Scotland as well for some fucking reason. You were there. Um, then we went to Miami. This is now October time. We went to Miami and LA. Then we went to Germany, Munich. Then we went to Croatia for another EK event. Then we went to Amsterdam. And then I ended up in New Zealand at the end of the year for Christmas with my family. Um, and then after that, we fucking went to Mexico for an EK event. Oh, yeah. Then Colombia. Then recently we went to 
<laughs> we went to Prague and I was oh, yeah. there for 12 hours before I landed and the original plan was and this just explains how fucking I'm quite an organised person I like to be planned out Craig does stuff last minute um, I got to Prague and the original plan was spend two days in Prague two days in Switzerland and two days in Stockholm so I packed for the fucking cold went to Prague I'm there as soon as I go to the hotel him and Hassan the guy that he lives with are just fucking laughing and I just go what and they just go oh we just booked flights to Bali it mate. was actually quite like a legend I, like looking at it like yeah in third <laughs> person perspective in. like how someone else would perceive it yeah it, it was a bit insane they just said oh we booked flights to Bali no, fuck like, the cold not like yeah I don't think you're stressing that point enough like it, literally he walked into the hotel like just off the flight just out of the taxi from the airport yep. he walks into the hotel restaurant and we're like yo we're going Bali literally I've already booked flights like we're going yeah so, so then 12 hours in Prague went to Bali and then that brings us up to date now where we're back in the fucking UK but yeah UK is the best travelled a fuck ton right basically yeah like dropped out of uni travelled to like what 10 countries I was almost, in a year yeah throw, not made a bunch of money. in the deep end I was just trying to figure all of this shit out and learn as I went um, but nah, yeah thrown into the deep end a bit I would say yeah I think that's the best way to learn. Like just throwing yourself into the deep end or just being thrown into the deep end is kind of, if, if if it depends on the type of person it is, right? We have other staff members where they need to be like slowly brought in, I think. Yeah. Um, but for you, because back in the day, like back in the chicken office, like I just kind of like throw you shit and you'd fuck it up about 20 times and then you'd figure it out. Um, I think yeah. that was kind of the better, like just shouting at you and then be, be right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Figure it out eventually. But obviously it depends on different people. But um, I like that kind of version as well. Just being thrown into the deep end, failing a bunch, and then just, just figuring out from there. Cause, it was yeah. a weird dynamic at first as well, because he was a friend that was now my boss. So it took me a while to adjust to it. But now I think it's fucking fine. I think we're good. Yeah, and I want to I say one thing as well, because obviously we're, we, were, we were friends first, and then we obviously started working together and stuff like this. Um, that's a very difficult relate. I, I think it's worked very well for us, but it's a very difficult relationship for most people. Yeah. In that I would not recommend it for most people in any way, shape or form because most people's friends are dickheads. And most of my friends were dickheads. Like yeah. that's why, why they're not sat next to me now. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, and I, I was watching a podcast earlier today and some guy was like, what's the, what's the biggest reason? It wasn't a podcast actually, whatever. It was the biggest reason the light's gone. The biggest reason why most people get held back is because of their friends. It was like, what's the, what, the guy asked him like, what's the biggest reason why most people get held back? It's because of their friends. It's because of the people that they surround themselves with. Warren Buffett said it. He said, show me the people, you, yeah. show me the five people you spend the most time with and yeah. I'll show you your future. Yeah. And that's completely, it's the most cliche thing in business. Like the most cliche quote ever in business, but it's completely it's and utterly true. Fucking true. Yeah. So, I think that's kind of the fur yeah like you just gotta bear that in mind if you're going into business because obviously now that we run the community and stuff like this and I speak to a lot of people in my Instagram DMs and stuff and Twitter DMs and so many people start businesses with their friends and it's just like I already know it's a terrible idea yeah. just based upon speaking to them like a few sentences like I just know it's a terrible idea yeah so you gotta really bear that in mind and you got to have the correct dynamic and the correct responsibilities set almost from from essentially day one which is very hard to do and obviously it's got to change and you got to have clear communication and stuff like this that and was the biggest thing that we yeah. i think that we did, did right was we communicated yeah yeah so yeah i think yeah literally communication and if you if you work with someone that's unreasonable it doesn't work essentially so it's almost i think the way to look at it is look at their personal relationships with other people mm. right so say I don't know. An example would be like if you had really bad relationships with your parents or something. Like this. Yeah. If you had a really bad relationship with your parents. Okay, this guy can't even have a relationship with the people that birthed him. Okay, it's is gonna he going to really problems. have good friendships? Is he really going to have bu good business relationships? Probably not. So, if someone doesn't have respect for their parents, they're not going to have respect for you in business and listen to your opinion. Yeah. Or if they have bad friendships, another another example, right? Um, then they're going to be bad in business. They're going to be a bad business relationship. They're going to have bad friendships and they're going to have to overcome that to actually do anything in terms of business relationships. Yeah. So that's... But it was it was a lot of fun, right? Obviously going to all of these cool ass countries. We had a lot of fun as well as doing work. But well, I mean, how do you think the businesses were kind of affected or the, the yeah. were affected by us traveling a fuck ton? I would say it's good for different different reasons. 
I think traveling is very good if you want to get new ideas because I think it opens your your brain almost to more creativity and and more interesting ideas. Yeah. So like there's 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 key ideas I won't mention them now, but it's like those ideas came in Thailand or some shit. Yeah. Right. Where you just reset it in your environment and that allows like the the fresh air just changes your environment and changes your You've perspective on things. And it, yeah. it, it resets your mindset because I'm now in the UK. I was, I was sat in the fucking warehouse. Mm. I'm now in the UK. Before that, we were in Bali, Prague, Dubai. Yeah. And now my mindset is completely different in, in the UK. And I, I'm thinking in a different way as to what I was thinking in Dubai. Yeah. So my mindset changed and changed for the better. So that's why I'm going to stay in the UK for a little while. So, And on that... I think that's very good. Are you... But, wait. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> go on, mate. <laughs> I was also going to say... But if you want to lock in, you shouldn't fucking travel. That's the stupidest thing ever. If you yeah. actually want to scale and you want to scale your... You know what you need to do. If you know what you need to do, stay in one fucking place. Because I remember in Bali, we were speaking to a few people. There was a lot of people. We went to a fight night in Bali. Yeah. It's like, there's like fucking 50 econ dudes in there, right? Yeah. A bunch of fucking nerds in there, including us. Should we show a clip? <laughs> ah, show <laughs> that's, that's ruthless isn't it <laughs> just got to show the clip of Damien getting lapped yeah, up yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, the clip yeah. <laughs> nah, because when we did that retention dropped um, <laughs> actually did on the violin it dropped uh, no one wants to see Damien Damien getting, getting twerked on yeah so don't show that editor um, I was asking people I don't know it sounds so weird but I was asking people I was like are you scaling like how's work and then I was good it's like okay are you scaling or are you like maintaining because often I think when I'm on holiday or when not holiday, but when I'm traveling, it's it's you go into maintenance mode. You go into okay, I'm not. I'm just trying to keep my head above water. Yeah. But you're not scaling. You're not improving the business. You're not pushing forward. Even I was speaking to um, one of the UK boys today, who's in who's in Dubai right now, and I was like, mm. like, how much work have you done? And he's like, <laughs> I've done fuck all. <laughs> I've done nothing for the past three weeks. Yeah. And it's like, okay, that's great because obviously you've got to have fun you're young you you spend the money it's cool it's interesting it's fun but if you want to actually scale you need to stay in one fucking place so yeah. if you don't know what you want to do and you're already in business traveling's fucking great bring you more creativity but if you know what you fucking need to do you just need to lock the fuck in just lock yourself in a fucking room lock yourself in a warehouse yeah because you were here it. for two years literally i i probably i went out maybe once a month right i wasn't a big club guy at university I like to kind of just try and work hard I was a bit of a nerd and every time I'd go out pretty much I would invite him I saw Craig in those two years I would only ever see him if he came over to my house for my birthday or if I needed to go to the warehouse to do him a favor I, he never came out he'd locked himself in his shitty apartment and you'd, you'd come to the warehouse every day for like 12 13 hours right and then you just go back do it was more, more like it was more sleep. like yeah it was more like 14 sometimes especially yeah. in q4 it was literally i know i i knew exactly what i needed to do yeah i needed to ship out the orders i needed to get more orders and you were scaling and then, on and then etsy there was as a well point I, was, I was scaling fucking dra ridiculous on etsy yeah there was points where i was sleeping like four or five hours a night there was po like i would often go to bed at like 9 10 a.m like i would mm. let the employees into the warehouse because again i've mentioned this many I, i'll mention it again you always want your employees to feel like they're working less than you. Yeah. You never want them to feel like, okay, my boss does fuck all all day. You never want them to feel like that because then they start resenting you, then they start working less, then they quit. Um, so you'd or they just be the less. first there and you'd be I'd the last be to the leave. I'd always be the first last to leave. But what I would do sometimes is I would literally stay up until 8 a.m. They would come into the warehouse. I'd say hi to them. I'm like, okay, I've got to run. I've got to go do a business meeting. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to my house and, and go do a business meeting. I'm just fucking sleep seven hours, wake up, go back straight to the warehouse and then just literally 16 hours a day. My entire life was, I was in the warehouse at my computer or packaging orders or managing the staff members. And then I was sleeping. Yeah, I and didn't only, see you for two years. And also, we're not in like a big city. There's no, I haven't cooked in years. <laughs> so <laughs> I haven't cooked in years. And the only restaurant open is a McDonald's that's like 30 minute drive from here. The, past midnight, the only, only place open. There's not even any supermarket. There's one supermarket. I know where all the places are that are open past midnight because I did that for so fucking long. There was a space of like four months where I was literally... Nocturnal. 16 hours a day yeah. just every single fucking day but um, yeah the, the point is if you fucking know what you need to do just lock the fuck in 
ignore everyone else ignore all just ignore everyone yeah ignore yeah. everyone just do what you have to fucking do to get to the next level because i think one thing looking back you never remember those like you never really remember the 16 hour days you never really remember it like you never think like that 16 hour day was was hard like i like obviously now thinking back i remember it but you never really remember working 16 hours you never really remember pushing those extra four hours when you're fucking deprived of sleep but you always reap the rewards of it later on and you remember the rewards like it's great having more fucking money in my bank account being in a better position but those extra four hours just pushing beyond the limits was the thing that got me to the position now yeah and i don't i don't think i'd be in the position now if I didn't push those extra four hours for fucking a month and get less sleep and just Oh, I push. wouldn't be here. Yeah. I wouldn't be here because of what you did, literally. Yeah. Yeah. But now you're leaving Dubai potentially, right? Well, you're... you. So I really like the UK. Yeah. I See, really like the UK. you got Craig back to the UK now and he's just fucking loving life. He, yeah. He's shat on it the entire time. Dubai is the best, blah, blah, blah. He's been also, back here also, for two weeks. We, he's we've like glossed over it. a lot of stories here. So if, if anyone wants to put a comment down below on any stories you want to hear more about, then then put it down below. Or any, or any points you enjoy, anything like this, because obviously... We can expand. We're, I, I'm new to the podcast era. The podcast era? The podcast game in terms of talking about myself, I suppose. But anyways, yes, potentially leaving Dubai because... I think I, I really like the UK. I don't know. It sounds weird because internet, the internet money sphere shits on the UK a lot. And obviously I'm, I'm part of that to a certain degree, just more to get likes than actually what my opinion is. But I think Dubai is very good, but it's only for, I don't know. It's like, okay, I have some big plans. I want to get a larger warehouse. Um, I want to set up like a big warehouse where we have um, offices in it. I don't want yeah. to get physical offices. Yeah. And the reason why I want to get physical offices is because over the past, what, like two weeks? Two weeks I've been in the UK. I've, I've, I've been with Oscar and I've been with um, one of our other guys as well, Sham. And I've, we've just been working. We've been powering through so many things. In the past two weeks, I feel like we've accomplished, what, more three, than three months? Yeah. Because it's such a hassle, you being in Dubai. It's like we have to call. It's a communication. It's a communication. Time zone's different. Maybe I'm out for dinner and yeah. then these guys are working. It's just the communication is not as quick. Yeah. When you're in different time zones, when you're in different locations and you're doing different things. Like so, now we all go gym together. So we're all yeah. away for an hour doing gym and then we come back and... And you just know people's schedule. So yeah. you just you just understand things in a much better way. The communication is better. And that, that's that's really the thing that allows you to push to the next level is just the communication between your employees, between your partners, between, between members, right? So it's really the communication thing. And it's, it's as I've been in, back in the UK for the past two weeks, the communication, I, yeah, we've literally achieved more in the past two weeks in terms of ideas, in terms of action, in terms of the plan moving forward for 2024 and 2025 and 2026. Than we, than we would have done yeah, uh, like otherwise. in the past fucking six months even yeah so yeah obviously now i've got to put those things into action but let's just talk about ideas all day yeah <laughs> fuck action <laughs> who needs that um so i yeah i might be back to the uk so taxes are going to be a an interesting fun one, one. yeah so but I then mean, also taxes over. don't really matter that's 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 my theory like taxes obviously it's gonna hurt if i'm paying 30 percent or i'm paying 40 percent or i'm paying 20 percent or whatever i manage to figure out um in terms of legally avoiding as much as tax legally because everything we do is above board no no it is <laughs> with taxes it's fuck's sake no it is with taxes yeah. i legally avoid tax by by not being resident in the uk but if i become resident again then i'm gonna have to pay some fucking taxes but anyways let's say it's 30 percent it's okay I'm paying 30% of my income, but can I earn 30% more by being in the UK and having quicker communication and having a better base and having a longer term base and stuff like this? Like, probably, yeah. Yeah. It's like, would I set up a warehouse in Dubai where we have offices and where we have podcasts, where we're going to move all the staff members out to Dubai? Like, probably not, because are we going to be in Dubai for the next five years or for the next three years? Or like, no. No. Pro probably, probably not. No. So, is that the place that you want to build a long-term base and actually build an empire? Probably no. not, no. For, for, for me personally, no. So, I probably will move back to the UK or maybe Eastern Europe or maybe the US. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we've been discussing it the last couple of days. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. But 
there's a lot of cool things that I want to do and stuff like this in terms of incubators and, and stuff. I think it would just be fucking amazing to just create like a big, just have a big like four or 5,000 square foot warehouse. It wouldn't be too expensive, maybe two, three, 4,000 pound a month. And it's just like offices. It's just like, we just have like a proper incubator there where, where everyone can collaborate. We can obviously collaborate. All of our staff members can, can come in, collaborate, and then partners and, and potential partners. And we can have like a warehouse bit. We can have a photography bit. Have a podcast we can have a bit. podcast studio. Yeah. Like we can have all these cool things. We can have fucking... It'll be a lot more fun. Dirt bikes in there. Yeah. We can have more vehicles <laughs> more mx5s i essentially want to do it just yeah oh shit yeah we gotta put them so the army of them in front yeah army yeah. from them in front yeah they're gonna be inside bro oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah of course yeah. that's why i'm getting the warehouse um <laughs> so i yeah like that's that's kind of my thought process but um yeah that's my thought process i kind of have a different question now and i think this would be interesting for the viewers why because there's a lot of business models out there right you can do a bunch of different things online these days why did you decide to go into e-commerce? Why did you decide to choose e-com to choose e-com or to choose dropshipping above all of these other business models out there? So I think the way I actually got originally into e-commerce, I'll start with that story because yeah. I think that's an interesting story. So I was running the the little video agency, marketing agency thing, posting on LinkedIn, making YouTube videos for that company that I used to work for. Yeah. Maybe like I was doing that for like three, four months. I was trying to get more clients. To be honest, I just didn't have the confidence and I just didn't know how to sell. Mm. I, I remember pitching to people I was just I cringe oh, <laughs> cringe I cringe just not even like just oh, I was just cringe at it I was just some like little 19 year old kid and I was just a kid you were trying like four years ago. but yeah. yeah I was trying but it just wasn't really working very well and I didn't really like it that was the thing I just didn't like it so one of one of my friends um, that I met in college he was doing e-commerce and he, he was doing very well and he he done like maybe just shy of six figures or maybe just shit six figures. Um, and it was going well in terms of revenue. And he, he, he just didn't like the operational side of things. He didn't like the back end. He didn't like the boring shit, which I actually quite, so I actually quite like. And he knew I was running a business. He would, yeah, he knew I was running a business and he was knew I was doing that. So he knew I was reasonably competent and we'd done like obviously supreme reselling and stuff like that. He knew, I knew he was doing that back in the day in college. He knew I was doing that back in the day in college. And I've been doing that for ages. Yeah. Just makes me want to go do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> go stand in a cube stand for six in a hours. Cube for ages, <laughs> yeah. For a hundred quid. And <laughs> I should do that. Good old days, mate. Good <laughs> for old days. Video. Really trying to get a ticket. It's a good excuse for a, for a video. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he knew I was competent. He knew I wasn't a spastic. He knew I wasn't a retard. And that's probably not probably not, not a word I should use <laughs> don't hear, bleep fuck it, it. Fuck well, it no nah, don't fucking bleep it retard um, and the, the guy knew I wasn't a, an, an idiot basically so he employed me he paid me a few hundred pounds a month to deal with his customer service and deal with his back end for his dropshipping store so I was dealing with that and I essentially negotiated my way up to 30% of the business for new projects not for that original store and then 50-50 of all new projects. So then that's how I found my first winner. So essentially I had a mentor, right? He was a mentor to me and he helped me do a bunch of extra things, um, a bunch of cool stuff as well. And obviously we got those first offices together and stuff like this. So I don't remember what your question was. But how, how did you get into Wecom? But it sounds like Ecom. him. It was kind of by luck almost yeah. um, because that was what he was doing. If he was doing an agency or something else, maybe I would have gone down that route. But the reason why I've stuck with Ecom, I think is, is more interesting. And it's because it's very fun. You're constantly doing new things and it's a mixture of marketing. It's a mixture of fulfillment and it's a mixture of employing new people. You learn so many different skills in terms of like copywriting, video editing, photo editing, in terms of just like pure business management. So you many. learn everything. Yeah. Um, and that's why it's very different to like a role like sales, right? If you're doing sales, you're just learning sales. You're yeah. just doing that one single thing. And it's it's not a business. So whereas e-commerce is like a whole business and it has so much potential upside. Like e-commerce is a business that is an industry that's drastically growing as well. Big time. Drastically growing, especially during COVID and, and after COVID and stuff like this. Um, and that just greatly pushed me forward and greatly just, it just... It, it was everything together and there's always something to learn in e-commerce. That's something I really liked, I suppose in most businesses. But 
in e-commerce particularly, there's so many different skills to master and there's so many different things that you can do. And my theory as well is like, okay, maybe I do e-com for two years, maybe I do it for five years, whatever. Maybe it doesn't work out for whatever reason. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't matter because I've learned so many different skills. I can go get a six figure salary in any single one of these positions, whether it's video editing, photo editing, fulfillment, warehousing, whether it's business management, whether it's just managing someone else's thing, like consulting. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it was, but I knew that there was that thing that I'm growing skills and I'm always learning things in different industries. And there's always something more to learn. Even to this day, I learn things by running the brands and running new offers that we're running and stuff like this. And there's always something more to learn. And there's always an infinite amount of businesses to to go within e-commerce. Yeah. It's like, okay, you're really good at email marketing. Okay, just start an email marketing agency and then fucking really, really good at Facebook ads. And there we actually go. started a Facebook ads agency and that worked well, but worked well for different reasons. The agency wasn't that successful. We were a fucking sick of ads who just didn't know how to sell. <laughs> so yeah. that's why I started e But how did you find the 50-50 relationship with your business partner? Because you said you worked your way up from 30 to 50 or from fuck all to 30, then 30 to 50. 50-50, 50 where well, you're both in charge. So how did you struggle with that? How did you find that? What was the relationship so like? So 50-50 is a very interesting way to do a business. Like I don't, it's very hard to do. Well, yeah, there's not because, two kings. There's not two presidents. There's not two yeah, leaders, it, right? It works, it works, but it just, it works. It's a very interesting way to do it because it's just the dynamics of relationships are very hard to do. And obviously we're still young don't understand fucking relationships and don't understand people to the degree of like a 50 year old or 60 year old or no. even a 30 year old like i'm fucking 23 oh. the other day i said like i'm 24 like five times and i was like fucking fuck. hell mate. <laughs> i was like wait how old am i i have to do the maths and figure it out it's like 2023 my, like, yeah well done um <laughs> So when you're 23, you don't understand relationships and even obviously younger, like it just the working relationships is just fucking this whole thing that's just like drastically amount of things to learn and figure out and how you, how you just work with people. It's fucking hard. Yeah. It's like your first girlfriend, you're going to fuck it up because you don't know how to have a relationship. Be in a relationship, yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. First marriage, GG. Gone. <laughs> so First kid. First kid, yeah, GG them. Huh? That's you, mate. You're the first one. Nah, first one's the best one. We put the most effort oh, in the first it? one. No, no, no. It's yeah. middle. That's not. It's not middle. <laughs> middle. It's just not. Please. But um, <laughs> please. But it's very difficult relationship to 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 maneuver around. Yeah. And it's it the best way to do fifty fifty is to have differing, almost differing people that conquer different roles. So that's the best way to do it, and that's the only way it actually works long term. Is if two different people they have good communication and they also you like they conquer different areas yeah and they conquer them well and they the thing is no one's ever going to put 100 percent effort in all the time if it's a 50 50 relationship maybe one week it's 20 80 in terms of effort in terms of whatever and then one week it's 50 50 and then one week it's 40 60. so it's it, it's, a, it's a constant battle it's a very interesting way to actually run a, a business essentially yeah. it's, it's very it's it's very difficult and yeah. that's and i was going to say because you you're obviously very work orientated right not everyone is did you ever find it where you were doing more work than they were for an extended period of time yeah but there was also points vice versa right so there's points where like i'm taking l's constantly and then the other partner's not and then there's points where the other like i'm taking w's and the other partner's not so it's a constant battle but it's it works if you're on the same path and you want the same end goal i think yeah if you're on the same end goal whether a that's then. a large shopify brand or whether that's a hundred million or whether that's whatever if you're on the same goal and you're going towards the same thing then that works it's like the same with marriages right if you get married too young where you don't actually know yourself that's when marriages often feel like a fucking marriage counselor but <laughs> if you're on this uh, the way it's true though the way i roughly understand relationships is like if you're on the same path and you can grow together then it works but if you're almost too young you sometimes end up growing together which works amazingly but you sometimes end up growing apart and you start figuring out who you are and who you are is not he wanted to be with that person essentially yeah. so that's originally what happened with that kind of relationship is like we were going down different paths and I wanted one thing and he wanted another thing sounds like a fucking marriage but I wanted one thing and he went wanted a different thing so okay 
<laughs> I wanted one thing and he wanted a different thing so you end up going down different paths so that's yeah yeah no. but if you're on the same thing and you want the same end goal then it always works well not always, yeah but it, if you want the same thing because you're the it's a team effort then you're a team, a team moving effort, forward yeah. the end goal you know yeah what would you say your thoughts are on people doing cash grabs on social media yeah so that's something that so one 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 huge influence in my life especially when i was not really speaking to other people because i didn't really have any friends that were doing business or didn't really have any friends that were intelligent cheers mate <laughs> <laughs> intelligent in the <laughs> sphere of business yeah i do fuck all that's valid it's one of the biggest influences was gary v mm. so i used to binge his content like binge like literally like binge and one of his his biggest thing is like legacy right he's, he's building a legacy brand he hasn't done any quick cash grabs he's always focused on building building, building long building, term building, 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 building. yeah long term long term and i remember a quote he always says i don't know if i necessarily agree with it because i'm not really contemplating fucking that kind of thing but he always said like he wants the most people to turn up to his funeral that's his thing he wants to build the biggest legacy he wants the most people to turn up to his funeral and that's like his kind of end goal north star for success in terms of influencing people is the most people turn up to his funeral and give a fuck about him when he passes or just give a fuck about just him, have a right? positive have impact. a positive impact yeah and I, I see a lot of kind of influencers and i see a lot of people just going down the wrong route of just trying to make money quickly and just trying to just grab 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 yeah when it's not it shouldn't really be that in my opinion if you if you I have a platform and I have like a fucking tiny platform, right? A few thousand followers. But if you have like a, even a tiny, tiny, tiny little platform, I think positivity and pushing people down the correct path and pushing people down actually doing good businesses and pushing people down the correct way and building legacy for yourself and building just kind of pride for yourself is the best route to go. I think that's the best route long-term in terms of cash. And I think that's the best route in terms of just pure human to human relationships. But yeah, that's my thought on it. What are your no, thoughts, I like mate? that. I like that. Um, no, I think you should definitely go for the end goal, right? Um, yeah, like <laughs> anything can change as well at the end of the day. Like for my entire life, I was going to do one thing. I ended up doing another thing over a month's decision. Um, but yeah, if you build legacy, if you, you build, build legacy. goodwill with other people, I think it always... Karma, karma... I think some people say there's no such thing as good karma. There's only thing, such thing as bad karma. Oh, really? I yeah. haven't heard that before. Apparently that's how karma works. Oh, okay. There's no such thing as good karma. There's only such thing as bad karma. So you can get bad karma, but you can't get good karma. So just like, yeah. You yeah. can go negative, but you can't go positive. You can't go positive. Sense, so you can yeah. just, but obviously the, whatever. You know what I'm trying to fucking say. Yeah. What is your mentality of focusing on, or not focusing on competition? You know, just focusing on yourself, learning, growth. Because you've said, like, if there'd be a theme of this fucking podcast, it would be Craig likes to learn. So <laughs> it's like, you, you focus a lot on that. But yeah, what is so, your mentality behind it? So that this is the case with so many things. And this is a very good um, way to think about e-commerce even uh, in terms of Shopify brands, in terms of obviously my licorice and stuff, the way we built this to the, to the way it is, which is the biggest fucking licorice brand in the UK. Yeah. I'm saying it like that because it's... it's I mean, you name not. another fucking <laughs> yeah come on <laughs> bet you can't <laughs> but it's the biggest one by, by revenue by far it's the biggest one by customers by far yeah. biggest one by re returning customers by far best, biggest one uh, in terms of valuation best, by far best staff members by far best owners by far <laughs> and the, the, the way I built that was essentially it's a Gary Vee thing again it's building the tallest skyscraper yeah, so there's two ways. Like, you can either tear down other people's buildings or you can build the tallest building. So that's a Gary Vee thing. It's like, you want to build the tallest building, you don't want to just spend all your time tearing down other other people's buildings because then you're not focusing on building yourself and building your own business. Yeah. So that's the way I ran my licorice. It's the way I ran pretty much all of my businesses. Don't get me wrong, we do the occasional fucking teardown. I love doing a good little fucking teardown. But the uh, end goal, and something I should focus on potentially more, is building the tallest building and always focusing on yourself and focusing on the making the best product, providing the best service. And then that will build you the biggest fucking building and focusing on actually building the biggest thing and building the best thing and making your own product and your own service the best possible, not focusing on competition so much. Yeah. Um, and I think that goes to the thing, even with just personal development, it, it's like, don't spend so much time focusing on what other people are doing and focus on yourself and focus on improving yourself 
rather than just focusing on what other people are doing and what other people are, are, are achieving because that doesn't really benefit you in the best way. It's better to build yourself, focus on your own journey and focus on becoming the best version of yourself and making the best business rather than focusing on tearing down competition, focus on comp copying competition. Just try and build the fucking best business with the best product, with the best service, with the best marketing, with the best brand and you will become the fucking best. And yeah. then like you're done, GG, easy. Right. Like they say, when you're trying to run as fast as possible, you don't look behind you. Yeah, you know, you look in front and you constantly and you just make, focus yeah, on yourself. Focus yeah. on yourself. Focus on 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 becoming the best person and building the best business that you can build, and you will outlast everyone else and you will beat everyone else, anyways. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like that. I didn't actually know that was a Gary V. Thing. Yeah, it's a Gary V. Thing, I like bro. it. I like it. I can recite Gary V. For days. forever, bro. I love Gary V, man. That's one thing. That's one thing that I think with Gary V is another another Gary V point. And this is why one reason why I stopped watching watching his content three years ago. He says so. This is another interesting thing, and I do the exact same fucking thing as well. He says the same 10, 15, 20 things over and over again, slightly different context, slightly different story, slightly different setting. Right? I'm saying the same shit now as I did ten podcasts ago. Yeah. But now we're sat in a warehouse rather than sat on a balcony in Dubai. He's bold. Now yeah, I'm bold well. now, and Rather Oscar's than shrunk, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the camera can't see it, but he's got a little booster seat. Uh, fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> fuck off! I, don't, I can't. I, got, I lost the train of thought. <laughs> Gary V repeats himself. Gary V repeats himself. Okay, so he was saying, and the reason why I stopped watching his content three years ago, and this goes to people watching this even now. I mean, watch to the end of the video. Please don't fuck my viewer attention. Um, I'm gonna see the <laughs> fucking dip in the graph, but um. The most important thing is to almost stop watching Gary Vee content. That's one of his things. It's like, stop watching me on social media. Stop just mental masturbating over building this and having confidence and doing sales and doing this. Actually, like, go actually fucking, fucking go it. out there and do it rather yeah. than just stop masturbating. Yeah. And like, obviously, some people are going to masturbate for five minutes. Some people are going to masturbate for fucking five years in the start. Some people will masturbate forever. Yeah. Or never stop. Yeah. We'll never stop. Like they'll just be mental masturbating till they fucking die. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So it's like about going out and taking fucking action. And I think that's that's really the most important thing. It's like you can watch this podcast about building a business and hopefully you are already building a business right now as you're watching this. Hopefully this is on the background while you're doing your fucking Etsy listings. Yeah. Shout out to you if that's you. And that's the way to fucking do it. It's like constantly build on like keep fucking building take action and learn at the same time you can only really learn learn for five hours and then fucking get stuck straight in don't just constantly keep fucking watching podcasts keep watching fucking this keep watching this just actually go out there and fucking take action continue to learn but go out there and take action and that was the point is like I remember watching the Gary Vee content and he literally, I remember the video and he said like, stop watching me, go fucking take action, go fucking do something with your life. And it's like, so fucking true. Yeah. So like there's true. a, uh, I don't know the exact quote, but I really like it. So there's, it's like this guy has an ax and he has to cut down this tree, right? And he's got five hours to cut down this tree. Um, the first guy just starts chopping away, just starts chopping, chopping, chopping. But, he doesn't cut the tree down in five hours because the axe wasn't that sharp. The second guy sharpened his axe for the first four hours and then cut the tree down in the last one, right? So obviously learning's important but at the end of the day. Well, no, sorry. Obviously doing the work is important, but at the end of the day, you also need to know what the fuck yeah, you're doing. You also need to focus sure on the learning. It's yeah. a bit of balance at the end of the day. So we've spoken about networking throughout this podcast. What is the event that is coming up in about a week? So we've got the Etsy Kings Greece event. So literally every event we've done, we've only done three up till this point. This will be the fourth. It has gotten better and better, right? We've been trying to figure it out as we go, obviously get the feedback from the people who come. But even the first one in Barcelona was fucking sick. The guys, everyone loved it. We enjoyed it a lot. Then we had Croatia, Dubrovnik, Croatia. Again, you know, a little bit of a different vibe to Barca, less partying, but even still, very good fucking event. The last one we did was in Mexico. That was by far the best one. We had a fucking conference, a boat, part, like we hired a boat for a couple of hours, open bar, food. We had, uh, we went out clubbing in the evening, got fucked, bought like, Craig bought like two, 300 beers for everyone. Some girl got her tits out, got in a pool. Um, and then we finished it up with a dinner, right? So Greece is going to be good. It's going to be very fucking good. And I think networking is underrated in my opinion. And I, I'm kind of a victim of that. I didn't, I didn't understand the value of it 
until around halfway through last year. But if you think about it, the only reason why you're in this position right now is it's for networking. networking. Essentially, like if you yeah. think about it like that, yeah. it's literally the only reason, right? So yeah, yeah we've got a fucking networking event coming up in Greece, which is super cool. This is not a pitch or anything, by the way. Like by this time, the tickets are gone. Like yeah. you can't fucking come. So you missed out. <laughs> missed out loads of fun loved it um, so yeah it's gonna be a fucking sick event Mexico yeah. was super good Croatia was super good as well Barcelona was fucking good as well all the trips are sick trips are super good the reason why they're good though is because of the people that come not necessarily I mean planning's good I don't want shit in your planning but um, it's because of the people that come and 100%, I think 100% it's because of just the whole community inside of obviously Etsy Kings is just fucking great and, and actually, members make it super on good. the note of the reason why I'm here today is because of networking. That's so fucking true. Like, there's people who came to the first event we did, Etsy Kings Barcelona. They then began to work together. They then began to share private suppliers. They began to then, you know, there's three guys who met all within Etsy Kings, I believe, who now have moved to Vietnam two months ago and they're planning on being there for the next six months and they, they live together they've moved there there's been a bunch of other guys who met these same people at events they've gone to Vietnam they've been chilling there for like two three weeks on a little like not holiday like work vacation and they're now coming back as well right like you could meet someone at one of these networking events and end up doing business with them for the next 10 20 years right me and Craig met in at, when we were 11 12 in secondary school and what 11 12 years later we're now in a warehouse last two standing yeah, so many so many guys at the event like me and actually create real businesses it's, it's kind of like cool yeah. it's kind of weird to think about well even like within the community Gabe and Lloyd two huge members of the Etsy Kings community they've now become very close to each other and they, they talk every single every day every single day and they didn't know each other before joining the group and now they're literally best buds yeah. practically married <laughs> yeah they talk every night on discord and they work together they they have some projects together but most of their stuff is is separate but they just kind of work they just help each other almost yeah. because they don't want to compete against each other they just want to like obviously grow together and and, and, and help each other yeah and yes yeah, it's, it's fucking great and that was just like they first met in manchester which wasn't even like one of these big crazy planned events it was i mean that manchester was quite planned well a little bit planned yeah but that manchester was like a small conference and it was like a six hour thing it was just, yeah, six hour thing, small conference, dinner, shisha. Yeah. Um, whereas like these big events we're talking about, Barcelona and stuff like that, those are big events. They're two and a half, three, three days, days long. Yeah. And those are very different, obviously, because everyone's flying out. Like, I don't know, we don't have many members in Greece. Most of our members, like UK, US, Canada, yeah. mainland Europe, like Netherlands, a few from Germany. Australia. Yeah. But anyways, all these guys are flying out specifically just for this event, which is, makes it very, very different because you're you're then committed and you're forced to speak to other people in a, yeah. in a weird way. Like, well, you're these guys will to get go. Airbnbs together. Everyone has, yeah. And then pretty they much, don't know these people yet. Pretty much every member has got Airbnbs together. Yeah. Not everyone, but pretty much everyone is like booked out six or five bedroom airbnbs and they're just sharing they're, sh they're living together for like three days and that's the best way to do kind of networking events and it's, it's just I the agree. energy i think yeah you can do networking the right way you can do it the wrong way i'm not saying join etsy kings i'm just saying put yourself out there go to networking events because i've joined networking groups in the past and some are fucking shit some are fucking amazing but you can join 10 shit ones and just one has to be great and it will change the entire trajectory of your entire fucking life yeah i remember i flew out to miami it must be like two and a half three years ago now yeah and that was when i actually probably first started etsy i think it was literally when i first started etsy or, or i was still reasonably new to it and they just gave me so much energy I was the only guy that flew from out of the country. It was a US Miami based meetup. I flew from out of the country and it was just, I didn't even speak to many people there. Like I spoke to a few people there and it was just, it kind of just gave me, it, compl no, it completely changed and gave me so much energy because as an entrepreneur, you're doing things and it's, it's often very, very, very lonely. You're by yourself doing things. Like I literally sat in this fucking warehouse for two years. The only people I speak to were my employees and like the only reason they were becoming friends with me is so they didn't get fucking fired. <laughs> so yeah. it's very lonely. Networking just changes that completely because even if you you don't have to start a business and give up percentage to just work with someone. Like Lloyd and Gabe are the perfect example. They are doing things together now, but most of the stuff is completely separate, but they just work and help each other. Just 
because it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Like, yeah. Like, I give you a supplier, you give me a supplier. Like, I give you a supplier, you give me a VA, or, or just purely just sitting on a Discord call together just gives you more energy. It's just, it's going to give you more energy because, okay, one person's a little bit low on energy today. The other guy is going to bring that person up and vice versa. And there's so many different little group chats and so many different little friendship groups that have been formed from within like Etsy Kings. So and many. It's fucking great. And that's kind of it's the great. aim, right? Yeah, it's like literally. come in, find your group, find your people, and then you'll go off, you make a separate group chat, you start to work together, share resources. And, and that's what we want, right? That's, it. that's the reason why I started Etsy Kings to begin with is yeah. because... I knew zero people that were doing Etsy and doing Etsy dropshipping at a high level. I knew, not even at a high level. I knew fucking no one that was doing Etsy dropshipping. I knew zero fucking people. And I couldn't find anyone. I couldn't yeah. find anyone. I spent time looking because making a community and stuff is work. Yeah. And I mean, now you have 630 people. Yeah. It's amazing. So, yeah. like, it just allows you to open and broaden your mind. That's the reason why I did it is because then I was able to create other people and also find other people by putting out podcasts, putting out YouTube videos. Someone like if you're doing Etsy dropshipping, you're going to go on YouTube and try and find other people that are doing it. Right. Yeah. And the only way for me to actually find people that are doing numbers were literally to like put out my own content. People would reach out to me and through that, obviously created Etsy Kings and people in there then do really fucking well six and seven figures and then they become useful to me then those people I work with or they jump in on the 3PL they put their products in in not this warehouse a different warehouse but they put it in my warehouse and then okay cool you're doing this product research method help me with this one uh, what are you doing to open up new stores you're doing this method cool that's interesting might take parts of that okay cool and then we work together and you build together and you don't even necessarily have to find value in someone else friendship a lot of the times is just very underrated in the business world i think yeah like a a lot of the relationships inside of etsy kings like both of the guys are doing well they don't need help from another person but they more just need someone to just maybe bounce ideas ideas off off. that's actually more time it yeah Yeah. so it's incredibly valuable and i'm excited for for greece Greece will be good this comes out after greece greece was amazing (laughs) no yeah greece will be a very good event very good event yeah yeah Greece will be sick. And then going on forward. It's the biggest one yet, right? Biggest one yet. Yeah. We've got, at the moment, to this date, we have 40, not including start off, we have 42 people coming. So not bad. Yeah. 42 people flying out from all around the world. Yeah. To come to Greece. To booze. Not to booze. Well. (laughs) To to learn. Comradery. And then booze. (laughs) But half the guys don't drink. Yeah. Not Like 30% people don't drink. But anyways, it's going to be fucking great. It's going to yeah. be super, super good. And then after that, maybe Bali, maybe fuck knows. We've been talking about it. We've got the summer trip as well. That'll be good. A lot mm. of shit. Fuck knows. Don't plan that far ahead. I'm not doing Bali. <laughs> You've done it now, yeah? Been, I've been to Bali been and going there fucking back again. Never been to Greece. That's why we're going there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should do... Um, I know I, I, I know where the next event's going to be. I know where it's going to be. I already know where the next five events are going to be. You Easy. should just like go to say it and then it cuts and that's the podcast. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Anyways, on that note though, we will finish the podcast. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching this. Let me know in the comment section if you fuck with this podcast style. Let me know if you want me to, to expand more on the stories or expand less on the stories and less kind of rambling about different stories. And what stories as well, right? Yeah, we'll I mean- Go more into the summer road trip, into the office, into Craig being up here. It, like while I was at uni going into last year's traveling yeah, like, events what will help you what? more like yeah. is it more of the beginning stages I think it is we probably should have touched on the beginning stages more to be honest in hindsight um, but anyways yeah let, let, let me know if you guys like this stuff because obviously this is quite different to the normal having a guest on and the next podcast which will be on Saturday at 4pm every single week will have a guest and the guest will be fucking amazing so it doesn't matter it'll be Etsy dropshipping Shopify it'll be fucking agency whatever It'll be great. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check out this channel Saturday, 4 p.m. Every single fucking week, Saturday, 4 p.m. And I'll see you guys next time.